uh, the security is interesting. It will have been pretty massive. Even as we, as we speak, there's quite a lot of American air activity going on along the Polish-Ukrainian border, which is what you'd expect. So well done to American security for creating this. But there's some uh, diplomatic choreography going on here because this is Biden going to Ukraine on Monday. We thought he might go t tomorrow when he's due in Poland, but no, he's gone today. Tomorrow... President um, uh, Putin gives his State of the Nation address. And later in the week, the Chinese go to, uh, Moscow, uh, to Moscow and the uh, Chinese will launch their own peace plan for the, uh, for the conflict. So all three big powers are making big statements this week. But Biden has got in first. And so everybody else will have to react to him. They'll have to bounce off what he's saying and what he's doing rather than him react to them. So it's a diplomatic coup. It's not only a dangerous thing to do, it's a risky thing to do. I think it's diplomatically quite clever. Yes, it's interesting, the timing. What do you make of the Chinese role in all this now with these reports that they may be uh, considering giving uh, Russia some sort of uh, weaponry? Are we, we're definitely seeing, aren't we, a tightening of this China-Russian relationship, it seems. Uh, well, we may be, yes. I mean, Wang Yi, who was at the... He, he's a Chinese foreign ministry official. He's a, he's a senior official. He's not technically the foreign minister. Uh, the foreign minister is Qin Gang, and it's not clear quite who is dominant in Beijing at the moment. There's, a, there's an interesting power struggle, I think, probably going on. But Wang Yi is the man at the moment. And he was at the Munich Security Conference uh, at the weekend, and he clashed with uh, uh, Blinken over attitudes towards uh, the, uh, the conflict. And, I um, mean, Wang Yi has hinted that the Chinese might be giving more lethal aid to uh, Moscow. And Blinken says, we know you're planning to do it and don't even think about it. Putin, of course, really needs that Chinese aid. He needs the ammunition. He needs the missile systems. The Chinese could really help him out here on the ground in the war. But if they did that, that would be a big moment. And the Americans are making it very clear. If you do that, we will notice and we will, there will be consequences. We will react to that. We won't just complain about it, we'll do something. Yeah, and if it did happen, how would that reframe this conflict, do you think? Well, we're guessing because in the nature of diplomatic uh, bargaining, uh, nobody sort of lays out all their cards on the table. But I'm guessing that Blinken would have said to uh, Wang Yi very clearly, you know, we know this is happening, don't pretend it isn't. If it does, the, then the, the thresholds might come down from our point of view. We might give the Ukrainians all sorts of things uh, that they would like and that we've been holding back on. And also, there may be other ways in which we might take retaliatory action, even uh, economic action, sanctions, secondary sanctions against Chinese firms. The Chinese have been quite worried since the beginning of this war that a lot of their firms dealing in Russia would be sanctioned as secondary sanctions by the United States. And that is a credible economic threat, and I suspect that that threat may have been made uh, again, but it's it's all in private. We're, we're just speculating now. And, Michael, you've been following this war for us uh, in great detail uh, over the last few months. Where do we stand now as the war reaches its one-year mark? Well, it's been through two big phases, in a way. I mean, the first phase was the Russian attack, and it looked at the time. They took, quite quickly, about 20% of Ukrainian territory, and we thought they would surround Kiev and maybe take Kiev, and we expected uh, cities to fall to uh, the Russians. The only city that they took of any note was Kherson, down in the southwest. The Ukrainians beat off the attack, they held for a while, and then they began to launch their own counterattack. So that 20% of, of uh, territory then as it were, stabilised, as far as the Ukrainians were concerned, and the Ukrainians were, ab were able to counterattack in Kharkiv, the Kharkiv Oblast, and west of the Dnieper River, and take Kherson back. And so the Russians then were starting to dig in. By uh, late September, the Russians were digging in all along the front there, and only recently have the Russians started to try to push back. And not surprisingly, the pushback has been in the Donbass, so three particular places, Kremina in the north, where the Russians really have to hold that or they lose their position in Luhansk, a Bakhmut, which is strategically not very relevant, but the Russians have pushed and pushed and pushed and they look as if they're trying to create a victory in Bakhmut. Uh, it would be a Pyrrhic victory if they do, but a victory by the end of the week so that they can boast about it at the anniversary. Um, and more recently in Vuladar in the south, where they've lost huge numbers of troops. Uh, something like 56% losses in Vuladar. Two completely good units, not just Wagner units, good units seem to have been completely made inoperative in some crazy attacks down in the south. So the Russians are pushing in three particular places. 
I don't think this is the beginning of the new offensive. I think this is a, a preparatory phase because they're just throwing men at all of these areas. They're not bringing new equipment out and they've certainly not got their Air Force involved yet. I think they're trying to pin in place Ukrainian troops. They're trying to make the Ukrainians have to stick on those areas before the Russians launch somewhere else. Now, we, we can speculate about where that somewhere else will be, but when it happens, I'm sure it will come with a lot of air power. When we see all those bases in Western Russia, which are filled up at the moment with Russian aircraft ready, when those aircraft start to operate, then we'll know that the offensive has really begun.